In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate why the markers track is so important for your daily use of Cubase. So I'm going to use two different projects to demonstrate my points. This one here is a project for mastering and I have five different tracks from the same artist. And to make my life easier, what I've done is I've created loop markers for each of the individual tracks and I've named these loop markers to the specific track. Uh, the reason why I've named them this way is because when I go to export any of these songs, um, what I can do is I can name the the project, or sorry, I can name the files based on a cycle marker track batch export. So instead of using the stock between the locators export, I'm using between cycle markers. And then I can go in and export each one of the five cycle markers that I've created. And then I'm using the naming scheme as per cycle marker name, and then I add more information after that. So for this particular example, I have these five tracks, and it's going to name them based off of what I've named in the cycle marker, and then I add a little bit of extra information, so the first master, the date, etc., and then it, it, uh, it names it in that way, and then I can export, I can batch export all five songs to whatever I need. I can push the export button, walk away for five to 10 minutes or whatever I need to do, come back and I have all five songs exported and named accordingly. So in order to get these cycle markers, the easiest way to do so is whenever you have a track in the project or a range of events and all that kind of stuff, you want to select that range. So for instance, let's say I wanted one single song here. I would click the event, which is the song, click P on the keyboard, and it creates the cycle, um, or sorry, the locator start and end positions. And then you create an add cycle marker uh, thing. It created one here. Uh, now that I have it highlighted, I can name it to the song the song name, and then whenever I double click these cycle markers, it changes the locator's positions accordingly. Alternatively, I can go on the track itself, click the locate button, and it will bring the, uh, the, the cursor to the specific spot per the locator that I've selected, or I can select the cycle range, um, the locator range based off of the cycle marker that I've clicked, or I can also zoom into the cycle markers that I've created. So if I want to have a look at only the first song, I click that and it zooms in to that specific cycle marker you've created. So it saves a lot of time. It helps with navigation. It helps with export. Um, the other thing I want to touch on will be in the next project. So this project is a song that I was working on, like I was producing and mixing. Uh, the important things for this song for me is to be able to jump around different sections, not so much loop things other than looping the entire song to have a very consistent export. I do not want to continually export previews and things for myself or for clients that change in time in any way. I want to have it all consistent so that every time I send the songs to the to the customer, the song is the same length. When they're giving me notes on what to change for mixes and etc., it's always going to be in the same time from my first mix to my final mix. To get that consistent length, once the song is recorded or produced and finalized as a, a length, 
Then I select the range by selecting Control A on a PC and highlighting everything, clicking the P button, and then that selects the range and then I create the cycle marker. Another important thing with mixing and with producing is being able to jump between sections fluidly and easily. So I have at each important change of the song, I have a new marker and then I've named it to something relevant. So here I have breathe, which is a vocal sample. So I know which part of the song this is by looking at this and saying, and naming it breathe. Uh, I know there's vocals, I know when the bass line changes, etc. So another important thing is now that I've created markers for all the different sections is I want to be able to bounce around between those markers efficiently. So on the keyboard shortcuts, you can go from uh, one through nine on the keyboard numpad, the top of the keyboard numbers that actually changes the, um, the tool type uh, that you use on the mouse. Um, but so it only goes up to nine, which is kind of unfortunate because you can see here I have up to 17 different, uh, different markers. If you click shift N, it goes to the next one. Shift B, it goes to the previous one. Like I said, you can click here. I have a controller. It's actually a Steinberg transport controller that allows me to move between locator positions here with a click of a button. The cool thing too is that you have a click of a button, it adds a new marker. Uh, if you have a selected range of things, you can click a, a button, it highlights that range. Furthermore, you also have a dedicated marker window. So on a PC, if you go Control M, it opens up the markers window. Alternatively, you can go into the project uh, menu and click on markers. And you can move the locator by clicking the leftmost um, window pane here. You can sort your markers um, by any way. Uh, you can sort it by a name, you can sort it by ID number, by position, um, etc., etc. There's different functions you can do with this window. So maybe you would want to have this off to the side along with like, I don't know, um, a transport button. A couple quick last items. You can lock your markers track so that once you've set your markers and named them and done everything, you can lock it so that nothing will change. And last thing to note is once you create the markers, it assigns it an ID number and it doesn't always make it efficient. Like I demonstrated earlier, you can use the numpad to bounce between the different markers. And you can see that when I click two, it's going to the end of the project. And you can see that it's named from one to three and then goes to four or five. At some point, I created a marker number two and either moved it or deleted it or something. And then it kept this one named as three but I can always just change this to two and so on and so forth. In a Cubase project, you have the ability to separate uh, different track types or different tracks to your choosing. Uh, this little button here, it's, it shows here when you hover above it, divide track list. When it's not divided, all the tracks are in the project and when you scroll, all those different tracks kind of just move up and down in the exact same way. If you divide the track list, you can determine which tracks go up on the top and stay put. I can scroll up and down in this section if I wanted to, but it's going to be separately from the rest of the project. And this is handy for things like I'm demonstrating here the having the bars and beats as the main project ruler and then adding a ruler with seconds and adding a markers track that always stays on top so that whenever and wherever I am in the track, let's say I'm editing a piece and I have to move it around, I can see the bars and beats, I can see the time, I can see the marker and position 
uh, of the song at all times. And this is uh, very, very handy, I find. So that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and take care. Bye-bye.